This time we're gonna win. Sounded like uh, Cube did when he was with NWA. Ding, ding, motherfucker. It's round two. I got my lunch and my dinner, fool. You think we're going to bow down to the punk-ass niggas? We from the evil side, boy. So it kind of sounds like Cube is dissing himself, you know, like a mirror. He's looking in the mirror dissing himself. And artists began to take sides. The shit got pretty deep, you know. I had people from his side coming to me, you know, like, hey, man, you know. At the House of Blues in L.A. Be real, put it on and hold it all up into the crowd. The crowd go crazy. They go bananas off of it. And we're like, well, shit, let's take pictures with it. <laughs> nigga, you didn't take the chain. Nigga, why you wearing it? What, that, what, what you proving, nigga? How many brownie points you getting for that, nigga? You didn't take it. That's the way I felt at the time. It was a pretty interesting time because, you know, it created a lot of a uh, split here in L.A. between black and brown, you know. Concern began to grow that the beef might pit neighborhoods, gangs, and races against each other. They get ran the fuck out of L.A. Dead up. The S.A. rule the streets in L.A. Amidst the violent death of Tupac Shakur, and rumors that the Mexican Mafia was getting involved, cooler heads managed to prevail, and the conflict never boiled over. Somebody gave me B-Real numbers. If that B-Real want to holler at you. He asked me, you know, so what's he going to take for you and Q to watch this? I said, just like you, all he's got to do is call me and, you know, we'll talk it out. And I explained to him where I was coming from, nigga. I don't got nothing to do with it, but that's my homeboy, and I'm riding with it. And he said, you know what, homie? I can respect that. I can't even be mad at you. I respect that. If that's where you coming from with it, Matt, I respect that. You called me like on, uh, I think it was January 1st in 97. Like, you know, like, what's going on, man? Let's talk this thing out, you know? And so I said, yeah, all right. Before we talk this out, this is why I did what I did, because I want you to really know that, they, you know, this ain't for nothing. The shit we've been talking is pretty heavy, so we can go on keep doing this, and sooner or later we'll run into each other, you know, it's a small world. If you want to squash it right now, we can squash it, I'll never say any fucked up thing about you as long as you stick to that too, and we'll be friends again, and maybe shit, we work together and do something. If we see be real right now, he can come hang with us right now, man. It was cool, for real, because we got past. In a high-stakes business climate that demands huge sales from artists' releases, there is intense pressure on artists to stay hot with fans. Because sometimes, just making good music isn't enough. Masterfully, I would say, LL's longevity has to do with the master of the game. He'll put out a record with Boys the Men that's a love song that's going to chart without question and sell the album. Now, to the perception on the street, it's like, what is he doing? Blah, 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 blah. But to the industry, it's still another platinum album. What he also does on the album is he would do collaboration with some new street cats. The 4321 with DMX and the Cannabis, which is how to battle with him and Cannabis again. First thing I looked for was the mic when I saw it. Like, damn, you know, when you see the mic, and, and you know what it represents. You know that if anybody would put a mic on their arm, when I say it, it's like, damn, this is my life. Or this is something that I do that I do very well, something that I did very well and I'm doing very well. Or, you know, it's a statement. Why are we recording this? <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is the debate right here. LL is a cultural icon. You don't come out your face and know, you don't borrow nothing. You don't say, you lucky to be on the racket. Perhaps trying to avoid an ongoing battle, LL told Cannabis that if he wanted to stay on the track, he would have to rewrite his rhyme. Cannabis agreed and rewrote the rhymes, thinking LL would do the same. He didn't. He took something out of context and he ran with it. You know, it's like he always been that way. You heard break the dawn. Mm -hmm. You don't want to borrow that, you want to idolize, and you don't want to make me mad, you 
With Cannabis's mic verse off the track, LL argued that no one would know who he was talking about. But rumors and copies of the original recordings began to spread around New York. The pressure to answer the disrespect mounted on Cannabis in an allegedly taped phone conversation. Widely circulated. Time for a fight. 